This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the second and the last lecture on sales tax. Uh, in the uh, first lecture, I explained sort of how sales tax worked and um, calculating the sales tax. Again, do be careful whether you're given the net price or gross price, make sure you've got it. The um, this lecture, I need to show you how we actually account for it when we're doing the double entries. Uh, look at example four, a very simple one, but then there is a few little things I need to say afterwards. Uh, Delta's purchases and sales for December are as follows. The purchases on credit, the net amount is 432. Uh, they've added on sales tax. Now here, we, it doesn't matter what rate it is, we're given the amount. So they've added on sales tax, 75,600. And so the total they actually had to pay to the supplier was 507,600. Uh, the sales, well, without tax, they were 624,000. But again, they had to add on tax. And so they've actually invoiced the customer with 733,200. Let's look at the double entry. First of all, the sales. Well, the normal entry for sales on credit. For selling on credit, remember, we debit receivables. And we credit sales. Well, when we debit receivables here, uh, we need to debit with the total amount the customer's going to have to pay us which is the gross amount. We debit with the gross amount of 733,200. That's how much the customer's gonna have to pay us the full price, including tax. However, if you remember from my example of the uh, farmer, the knitter, the shop, of the uh, amount we receive, the net amount belongs to us. The tax we've added on has to be paid to the state. So the double entry, we credit sales with the net amount. That's the amount we can keep. Uh, that's the amount we'd have charged if there wasn't any tax. That's our sales. The extra bit, the tax, is owing to the state. So we have a new account, the sales tax account. And to complete the double entry, um, we've debited with the full amount, we've credited with the net amount. To complete it, we credit sales tax account with the tax, 109,200. So the double entry works, it's you know, one big debit and two smaller credits. The sales tax, it's a credit balance because, for the moment, there's 109,000 owing to the state. However, we've also had purchases. Now, what do we normally do for purchases? Debit or credit, debit purchases, credit payables. Well, the same sort of logic. We credit payables with the full amount we're being charged. And the supplier, they've added on tax, they'll have charged the gross amount, 507,600. And that's the amount, the cash, we're going to have to pay them. Uh, the debit, well, we do debit purchases. But we only debit with the net amount. The difference being the tax, and if you remember the tax, we effectively get back because the amount we pay to the state is the tax we've charged less any tax we've suffered. So to complete the double entry, credit payables with the gross amount, debit purchases with the net, the tax of 75,600, we debit the sales tax account. And so think about it, um, 
my sales that we can take credit for are 624 and the purchases 432 just as they would have been if there was no tax at all the sales tax account we've credited with the tax we've charged customers which is owed to the state we've debited with the tax that we've suffered when we were buying goods which we can set off uh, the balance remaining I hope my arithmetic's right, 33,600. It's a credit balance, it's owing to the state. Uh, when we pay it, the rules are different in different countries, uh, but uh, generally speaking, you'd probably pay it to the state in the following month. So it's a credit balance when we pay it to the state, next month the credit cash debit sales tax uh, it disappears. So that's how it goes. There are a few extra things I need to add though. First of all, we'll be charging tax on all of our sales. Equally, we're suffering tax on everything we buy and not just on goods. You know, um, subject to any special rules which we're not concerned about, exemptions and things. Uh, every time you buy goods, you'll have suffered tax. Uh, when you pay electricity, you'll have suffered tax. You know, there may be an electricity bill of 100, but they'll have had to add on tax. If it's 20%, it'll be 20, and we'd actually be charged 120. Well, fine. Credit cash, 120. That's what we had to pay. Debit electricity, well, the net amount would be 100. That's really what it's costing us. Uh, the tax, debit, the sales tax account, it had reduced the amount we had to pay to the state. So it doesn't matter what it is you're paying for, when tax has been added, you debit sales tax with the amount of the tax. Uh, secondly, sorry, one second. Uh, secondly, although usually you'll have charged customers more tax than you'll have suffered, and therefore usually there'll be a credit balance on the sales tax account, you'll be owing tax to the state, it could end up being a debit balance. You know, for instance, one month we may have bought a lot of new machines which cost thousands. And there have been tax on these machines, and we'll have debited sales tax account. Well, if it did happen as a result that you'd suffered more tax than you charged, there'd be a debit balance, and the state would repay the tax. So it could be on either side, usually there'd be a credit balance, but it certainly could be a debit balance. If it's a credit balance, we owe the state, a debit balance, they owe us. Uh, finally, I did say when we were doing the farmer, although overall the sales tax doesn't really make any difference, it does mean extra recording and extra hassle, you know, and filling in forms and things every month. And so, um, in most countries, small companies, small businesses don't need to register. They have limits, and you don't need to know the limits. It's different in different countries. Uh, but they might say um, you only need deal with sales tax if oh, your sales are more than 10,000. Because again, for a small company, it's a lot of hassle. Well, if a company is not registered, and again, it won't be your decision. The question will tell you uh, if they're not registered, but it would just be a small business. Uh, just as a little illustration, suppose uh, we buy goods. Well, even though we're not registered, the person we buy them from will, will be. So maybe the net cost uh, was 200, 
The tax, let's suppose, is 20%, is 40. The gross would be 240. So when you're buying goods, the supplier will have charged tax. However, suppose we sell goods uh, for 300. And there is no tax because we're not registered. If you're not registered, you don't have to add on the tax. Well, fine. When you sell the goods, if it's a sale on credit, debit receivables, 300. Credit sales, 300. There's no tax involved. They owe us 300. You can take full credit. However, if you're not registered, not only are you not charging tax, but you don't get back any tax you've suffered. So when we bought goods, we, had to, uh, we were owing 240, and if we bought on credit, we'll credit payables 240. However, if you're not registered for tax, you're not going to get back the tax, so the full cost is 240. Now, because of that, um, even if you're small, they do allow you to register if you want to. But that's not your problem in the exam. Um, you're not there to advise on tax. You're not expected to know detailed tax rules. But see what I've done. Um, if you're not registered, you don't charge tax. That's easy. But equally, whatever you buy, you take the full, the gross cost you don't get the tax back. Okay, so I hope that made sense, but that's what you need to know on um, sales tax. Calculating net gross. The entries, and most questions you'll get uh, will be people who are registered for tax, so that's the important bit. But, just to be safe, be aware what happens if, for whatever reason, you're not registered.